And welcome to the Imperial. Cheers. Hello. We have just watched Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Mm. Volume 2. Mm. The world looks very grey now. Yes. It does. <laughs> it's as if someone's taken a saturation slider all the way down yeah. to zero. It's the colour's drained from my life. <laughs> So um, I'm seeing that in 2D tomorrow because I mean obviously you lose some colour with the 3D, don't you? Yes. A little bit, yeah. So wow. I can't imagine how it's going to be tomorrow. <laughs> I got to yeah. say, do you imagine if a Warner Brothers executive went and saw this film sort of thing, you'd have some sort of uh, yeah. <laughs> yes. you know, too much colour. Yeah, it's usually well, usually uh, yeah, it's like some kind of LSD trip, I'd imagine it'd be for him. It'd be like, oh god, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, yeah. Hello and welcome to the Imperial. I'm Lee. Hi, Peter. I am Groot. <laughs> ah, nice. <laughs> and yeah, we've been to see Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Oh, we've just come out, we're having a drink in the Imperial. It is Friday and it is uh, 2.30. Yes. The dentist time. Mm, but mm. Right by Chinatown as well. Yeah, right by Chinatown, 2.30. Yeah, casual bit of racism there for the people in the audience. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone. Anyway, um, we're going to try and do a little review. Um, we'll try and keep at least the first bit spoiler free. Yeah. Um, but listen at your own peril. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, buy a you've beer. Got, you've got three bearded blokes prone to get overly excited about spaceships, so. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, and. Lots of cameos, Ooh. and and also I, I lost count of quite a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, okay. Well, let's just start the basics. I mean, did you like it? And we'll go round the table. So let's go, Pete. What did you think? Uh, I loved it. Um, right. I'm still processing it a bit at the moment, mm-hmm. but for the most part, excellent film. Right, Andy. Yes. Um, much like someone who's just had a massively awesome mm. sugary dessert, <laughs> I'm still riding that sugar high. Yeah. And, and it, it tastes good, it tastes good. Now, oh. it's a bit later on when the palate is cleansed and you can supple some of the finer flavours while well, I know where it ranks in the pannequin. But right now, yes, I am just full of sugar. <laughs> and possibly we'll need to rush to the loo in a minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm a little bit more muted on it, I have to say. Um, Le shock. Le shock. I gasp. <laughs> Look, I thought, I thought it was... Um, I thought it was a good film. I think, it was, and I think if it was the first Guardians, I think I'd, have, I'd probably enjoy it a lot more. Mm-hmm. But I don't think it's as accomplished as the prequel, huh. the previous one. I think this did what a sequel has to do, mm-hmm. which is t- take what has been established, build upon it, expand upon it, and make something bigger and better without rehashing what has gone before. Yeah, it's certainly not guilty of that. No, I, 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 um, okay, fine. No, no, I don't want to say anything because it's going to be spoilery. So, but um, yes, we'll save that disagreement even for later in this cast or for one later. <laughs> I mean, I, I thought it was a good film. Don't get me wrong. And I'm not not sitting here sighing and going, "Oh God, I've got to watch it again on Monday with the kids and Carol." However. It did feel to me a bit too like it was trying too hard. Does that make sense? Yeah, well, I can see that, that. It was kind of. I'm not. I'm not sure if that that works for me. I think no. I think it was, it was trying too hard, but that it was an entertaining trying too hard for me. Yeah, I mean, I think it's more like, for example, in the first one, he had the headphones and the, the Walkman, and there was a reason for it, and the and the sort of 70s, mid 70s, 80s music had a narrative reason to be there mm-hmm. whereas this for example just decided that now we're going to have a bit of Fleetwood Mac and now we're going to have a bit of you know yeah, something, something. That, and it just it just kept and they did doing... try and justify it but the, the, the contortions they had to go through to justify it each time got a bit sillier and exactly. sillier didn't they and my so like when Rocket's playing it for no yeah. damn no damn yeah. reason it's just like <laughs> oh we're going to do something oh have you got Quill's music there yeah yeah and it's just like 
And like, it, it wouldn't be the same without the music. So it's no, it wouldn't uh, be the same without the music, but you didn't need to keep explaining making it, yeah. it like that. Yeah. It kind of, in that respect, and again, this sounds like I'm damning it, but I'm not. I will say, right before we went into, before it started, Lee turned to me and he goes, I'm so excited for this film. I said, oi, remember the last time you were excited for a media property? <laughs> yes, exactly. We went to Andromeda and were very disappointed. Um, but the thing is, it's like, I, it feels like the Aliens comics. Right. The Dark Horse Aliens comics. Where, because Aliens was good, because it had Marines versus Aliens... All the Aliens comics can do is tell that story again. And doing ex- extremely more and more contortions, as you say, to get to the point where you have a sp- spread page with aliens and marines fighting on either side. Uh-huh. And this did exactly that with, with things like, like how it used Baby Groot and how it got the music in and how it would always try and have like at least one Drax sort of humour drop. You know, he's made he oh he said something he shouldn't have done. Tee hee hee, and and again, all the stuff he said was funny, and I did a, I did laugh, but I always was coming away feeling like there was no reason to do that in that particular scene, which just we had to. Whereas things felt natural in the first one, so the things felt natural in the first one because it was the first time it was done. Yeah, mm. but things like things like when when the the Milana goes into the Dark Aster and it's racing along and everyone everything's blowing up and everyone's dying and it's like ah and there's bullets flying everywhere and then you suddenly notice without it focusing on it that Drax is in the background holding onto the middle chair gets yeah. laughing his yeah, arse yeah, off yeah. and it's only when the when the scene comes to the end that he goes that was awesome <laughs> and you get that kind of like you know, childlike wonder from him. Yeah. But in this, they try that at least four times by my count. Well, at least a couple of times, yes. Well, yeah, so but we've, we've, we've established that this is a personality trait of him. This is this is this is who he is. Yeah, but each time they had to do that, th- they had to do that gag, put him in a ridiculous situation, throw so much shit at him, and then suddenly have it go. That was awesome. It's like it was like a greatest hit, not a volume two. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I disagree. No, I don't. And again, I don't dislike it. I'm not saying it's a bad film. I would. Not, I'm not. Look, I'm not. Not looking forward to seeing it again. I have to say. Mm. But I will go in with more tempered expectations. I think. I mean, I don't know the level of one's expectations going into this. I mean, I was excited for it, but I mean, after the. I think was the big trailer, the first big trailer, the drop sort of thing. I've just kind of been avoiding yeah. it. You know, I've not watched anything mm. and all that. So. You know, it, it for me it just kind of gave me what I needed, which was like I said, massive sugar high. I just I <laughs> yeah, wanted yeah. colour. I wanted, I wanted just. Yeah. What I wanted was a fun kind of optimisticy sort of science fictiony thing. I didn't want. I mean, okay, there were big stakes in this, but I didn't want you know we have thirty seconds or the world is going to end unless you say the name of your mother. You know that sort of yeah, thing. I didn't want. Yeah. I didn't want. It was not dour at all. No, it even wasn't. At, even at its downest point, and I, I, I'll admit, you know, a couple of flecks of dust going over towards the end there, sort yeah. of thing. But you know. Yeah. Even at its lowest point, it was still a bright and optimistic and joy-filled experience. Which you look at some of the shit we get in the cinema these days. Some of the stuff which comes out, you know, comic book films, even other Marvel films, and everything like this. You know, mm. this was just this was loud and proud. You know, it was just yeah. like going, "Fuck yeah, spaceships! What yeah. more do you want?" You yeah. know, this is just like, yeah, I, I love yeah. it. I mean. Um, Again, I might just be on that sugar high. Maybe the second no. time I see it, I'll be, I'll be down more where you are. But at the minute, I'm just like, oh, yeah, give oh, yes, yeah. all of the sugar. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Pete? Yeah, I mean, for me, the, the thing that might, I'm it's not sitting comfortably at the moment, is the... the Would it be the Popeye? No, no, that's sitting very nicely. Oh, my thank God. Sorry, take a look at my matchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Your vermism. We're all going to riding down a, go riding down a hill. To, to, to anyone wondering what the hell we're talking about, we're, we're sitting down about to start, you know, uh, you know, I've got the hot dog and Lee's got his minstrels and then Pete pulls out his bag and goes, anyone want a bit of pie? Yeah, we'll cover the similar about decent pie, can we? No, um, it's the, the 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 division of time that you spend with particular characters. There are a lot of characters in this, and a lot of them are done justice. Don't get me wrong, but I think the one character, ironically, that isn't slightly, is Peter Quill. 
which, you know, despite mm. the fact a lot of the story is revolving about, about him and his relationship, or any further than that, yeah. um, actually, as a result of giving lots of time to the other characters, which is very enjoyable, don't get me wrong, but that relationship doesn't perhaps get as sketched out as it needs to be for the payoff. Mm. the story for me I, I, I think this comes back to something and this is an ongoing thing with all films it would have benefited from introducing Ego in the last film maybe yeah. like halfway through so you've got that initial introduction there yeah. and you can do it because I always thought, felt with the first Iron Man film that they should have saved the Ironmonger storyline for the third one mm. so that Jeff Bridges was a character throughout all of oh, the films yeah. like I mean, as that's a, by far the weakest part of as, the first as, a, as a mentor yeah. and you know and as this thing I and mean, then it's when you get to the third one you realise all the resentment and that's what he's been building up to so yeah. that would have been better and I think the same could be said here you know if Ego had been introduced at the end of the first film just so you know him you know you can I sit in there and then in this one we realised they spent some time together and established that and I mean what they do in this one is obviously plot out for the next film another bad guy which is quite nice so I think uh, well no because the the bad guy that they oh I don't know that's all spoilerage because I don't know who you're going to be referring to but I the person well, I I'll tell you what, let's, let's wrap up our non spoilery stuff here <laughs> okay <laughs> I didn't think it would take long <laughs> didn't take long to it <laughs> okay okay so so in con- okay, so so okay. Let me put it to this, this way. I think the first twenty minutes was great. The middle, the introduction is fantastic. Yeah, the mm-hmm. intro is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'll say this: almost everything you've seen in the trailers, except a couple of bits, is in that first half of the film. Yeah, yeah, definitely. But in that first that first fifteen minutes is everything you want from a, a Guardian sequel. Mm-hmm. The bit where it goes Empire Strikes Back and decides to split the team, I think, is a misstep. And that, to me, was kind of the start of the whole thing feeling a bit sluggish. Mm -hmm. Then when it all comes together at the end, I was back invested in it, but... With you know, it's that middle section where you're not spending so much time with Quill. But this is probably well, it's just not, my just Quill, not just not just Quill, but just, <laughs> just all of them. You, you never get that interaction. The beauty of the first film was the interaction between the characters and the way they all came together and worked as a team. Mm. This film does the fi- Fast and the Furious thing of constantly telling you about it's about family and yet keeps ninety percent of the cast apart. Mm. Um, but and also when it is when they are apart, not a lot is happening. Yeah, there is a patch where it slowed down. So, for me, if Guardians of the Galaxy was itself, just for a scale, is a 10, mm, and a Iron Man 2 is a 1... Oh, that's harsh on Iron Man 2. Iron Man 2 is rubbish. Oh, it's not that bad. It is not rubbish. that bad. It is. No, when you're at 1, is, If that is your worst film... And I, I, you I'd need to see some really it. bad films. No, no, no. I'm, yeah. not saying, I'm, not, I'm saying in a scale of Marvel films. I'm not oh, saying right, in the scale so. of the oh, universe. Okay. I mean, uh, fucking hell. You put Even even Iron Man 2 still is 7 compared to something like Birdemic. Yeah. I mean, for fuck's sake. No, I'm just saying, if you're talking in a scale of... Uh, it's well established that one of the worst of the Marvel films is Iron Man. So if you're putting that at the bottom and, and Guardians, I feel we the need top, to rate the Marvel films now. Oh, there's not there's another mini so. That, 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 that's, that's Black Dog's for you. That ain't nothing to do with spaceships. <laughs> ah well, there's spaceships in it. Yeah. Well, we, we it's going to be even more we, than the new four. We can make the ones with spaceships in now. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> I, I would, all I'm saying is you're going to struggle to rate um, Captain America: The First Avenger on why? the strength of his spaceships. Yeah, yeah well, possibly. No, they had those. those but they had tech, though. Yeah, they had tech, and they had, and and at the end, in the end, Red Skull goes into space. He <laughs> <laughs> gets kicked. Out. <laughs> Hang on, get some more scrolls for you to clutch at. <laughs> <laughs> Never said I wasn't clutching at scrolls. I just said, you know. Anyway, so the thing is, all I was going to say was, I think Guardians One. If Guardians One was a ten, mm-hmm. this is a seven. Yeah, it's, I it's not. It's not so nearly as. It's not nearly as compact well constructed and as fluid as the first one I, yeah I think it tries more and falls slightly short as a result mm. but it's good that they were trying at least they weren't oh, just yeah. duplicating the first one absolutely you see I, 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 I'd say in my opinion humble as it is <laughs> I'm why, very why, humble. Why, why didn't you, you just hum- choke on your drink <laughs> <at that laughs> I was, was going to say are you as humble as ego <laughs> or are you <laughs> humble as Drax I'm yeah. humble as Drax at least um, no I, I, I frankly I think this is as good as the first one in fact frankly I think this might be better no no that, that I would definitely disagree with but I, 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 can, I can agree with it being an equal but I certainly wouldn't be on the 
on the line of it's better. No. I, I mean, it was never going to be better than the first one because the first one had surprise value because I was never expecting it to be as mind-blowingly as good as it was. Whereas this one, of course, I'm coming with very high expectations. But the thing with the first one is it doesn't stop. Mm-hmm. It's a relentless run. It's literally from one set piece to another to another to another, picking up characters as you go, and you learn about the characters as you go. In this, it has a set piece right at the first. It has a big dull bit in the middle where everyone just explains their, explains their backstory mm-hmm. in very blunt terms. Hello, I'm a person, and this is my backstory, and this is what's happened, and this is why it's happened, and this is why I am sad. What about you, person number two? <laughs> well, I feel sad because I have done this and this has happened and I was never hugged as a child. I mean, it's just like, they literally go around the table Some and of do the that. scenes were like that, yeah. Some of them were more subtle than that, but some were as, were as subtle as blunt that. as that. <laughs> yeah. and that. And that, to me, is part of the problem. The Gamora one was particularly bad. The Gamora, <laughs> the Gamora one like, and the... Oh, really? Uh, the Gamora Nebula one was yeah. just like, and I never had a puppy. Yeah, yeah, I was yes. literally like that. <laughs> yeah. And it was a shame because I think again Gamora is slightly shortchanged in this because she's not quite as kick-ass as she was in the first one. No, which may be a thing we get in the Last Jedi because I think if they do that with Ray as well. Mm. They dial it back, then oh, yeah. you're going to be all sorts of problems. But that's for another day, I'm sure. Yes. But yeah, I, I don't think I think it. I think at best you can say it's as good as Guardians, but I don't think so personally. Time will tell. I think with that one. Yes. yes, I think I think in terms of I fully admit, like I said, I'm on a sugar high. I think it's when I will have to go and watch it again. Like I said, when the sample of the flavors a bit more subtly and yeah. take it all in. But no, no my, my impressions, having just walked out of a cinema, is. Fuck yeah, I needed that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man. There's, there's not another. There's not going to be another film like it this year for sure. Well, I don't know. Thor, the Thor one looks oh, yeah. a little bit. <laughs> oh, actually, the Thor one looks very good, and I have to say, there's a cameo from the Thor Ragnarok that was in the bloody credits. Did anyone oh, yes, see yes, that? Yes. I did spot that himself. Yes. Yeah, I wonder whether that was. But you know what? You'll have to wait for the spoiler bit before we tell you who. Uh, Yes. And so now, ladies and gentlemen, we're moving on to the spoiler bit. So So I get another round in before we do that? Yes, we're going to get another round in. And um, basically, if you don't want to hear the spoiler bit, log off now. And until then, we'll see you next week. Um, Or we'll see you in about two seconds. Cheers. So here we are in uh, part two, <laughs> but we're not in the pub anymore, you? and we've somehow managed to lose Andy. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, yeah, so we're going to carry on talking about this film, um, though we do have an interesting challenge. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, um, the challenge being is that I'm now in a house where no one's seen it, and Pete's seen it twice. Yeah. So uh yeah, the interesting challenge now is to um <laughs> to try and say So you've got to have some sort of safe word you use instead of a spoiler, and then I've got to guess as to what the spoiler might be. <laughs> <laughs> so if you just say turd blossom, maybe, and then I'll know that you're about to say something spoilery. <laughs> well like no, no, that's the problem. I can't say anything spoilery. Yeah, I know, but as in I'll know that's you intended to say something spoilery, but couldn't, and then I'll okay. try and guess what yeah. that was. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay then. So, <laughs> <laughs> fucking hell, things <laughs> things we do for a podcast. We're going to talk ourselves into knots. <laughs> we should we just, are slightly. <laughs> we should have just carried on in the pub, to be honest. Yeah, never mind. But, never mind. Best but they plans. But there was there was clearly there was clearly a couple, um, a mother and a son who were behind yeah. us, and they were quite clearly listening in. And it was very, very clear that the kid didn't want to hear anything. Because <laughs> they were actually smiling at us. And then he sort of started saying, Guardians, at his mum. 
And then she looked around and it was like, oh, <laughs> Christ. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, okay, I'll tell you what then. So let's let's carry on as if as if we've <laughs> yeah, as if nothing's gone wrong. <laughs> and so Pete. Yes. Yes. Um how about telling me what you thought about it on your second watch? Because you've watched it twice now since we yes. since uh, I saw it with the kiddies this morning, and they were very impressed, which is good. Good, that's uh, a good start. Laughed the, the socks off through most of it, which I guess was the original intention, and obviously didn't have the sort of issues we were talking about that we had with it. Right. Um, yeah. And it's interesting second time round because I was more prepared for it. Mm. I guess they weren't as bad issues for me I they still niggled a bit the the, the worst bit is there's a, there's a very long section on the planet and uh, basically one of the the info dumps of the, that unfortunately you do get a bit yes. and and then they go to uh, Rocket and Yondu doing that multiple jump thing yes. which is just brilliant it's like oh yeah that's what I needed the shot in the arm shot in the arm you know? yeah because that's that is that is the that was the problem for me that whole section on the um actually I'm, I think I'm clear for a second that whole section on the planet which yeah kind of kind of needs to be there but it does uh, but it, it was laid on with a trowel a bit wasn't it <laughs> yeah just slightly so 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 yeah so the whole jumping the jumping visual gags was brilliant oh yeah it's it just stuff. so much fun and so <laughs> So this time round, second time round, did you find it more enjoyable or less? Yes, yeah, slightly more enjoyable, as I say, because I was sort of prepared for the, the slightly slow bit and knew that, it, you know, because the fear was at the time, oh, crumbs, the rest of the film isn't going to be like this, is it? But mm. it does take off again, so you're right. And you, when you know it's going to do that, it's not so bad. Yeah, uh, I, I, suppose that's, I suppose that's the thing. When you know that you don't have to wait much longer, you kind of... Yeah. So it's going to improve on multiple viewings, presumably. Yeah, because you you're, you're more relaxed that yeah, good stuff is coming. Don't worry. <laughs> mm, yeah, I mean, yeah, for me, I mean, I, as I said, as I said yesterday, I mean, I don't really want to get too much into spoilers now because I'm unfortunately kind of in that <laughs> slightly awkward situation. But um, yeah, I mean, for me, I I, I mean, I think f- the one thing I found most impressive was how the kind of elevated Dax's role. Mm-hmm. And did you find that his his stuff was funny at the second time round? That you, now you knew we were expecting it. Yeah, or, no, he was. He really does shine in this one. It has to be between mm-hmm. him and Yondu. Those are the real sort of standout characters this time round. Yeah, and uh, yeah, no, really enjoyed his stuff. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, for me, the only thing that kind of threw me with any other character because I mean, we we've already discussed you know Peter Quill's you know sort of sort of reigning back in his own film, but. Mm. The th- it was kind of the the need for Ra- Rocket to kind of become an asshole again. Yes, yes, that ha- that yeah, and and it's like when they do the third film, they can you can have to do that again, you know. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, I tell you what, it made me feel like it felt like um I don't know if you've seen it, you probably have, but it's the um Ser- Serenity the Firefly movie. Yes, where they went, f- you know, you'd had like eleven, twelve, you know episodes of you know 11 12 episodes of firefly and then and then basically they go to the film and they basically have to sort of soft reboot the characters mm. for the film and you're back to mal Re- reynolds being a bit of a dick yeah and it's like no 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 that's how he was in episode one that's not how he is at episode 11 yeah and here we are again doing and, this and in the comic uh, th- th- there isn't any sort of softening of Rocket. He's he's that obnoxious all the way through. Mm. Uh, and th- th- I guess there was a feeling in the first film where you were going to make him a bit softer for the ending, which then unfortunately left them with a bit of a problem with this one. And yeah. again, they do it again at the end because he's got like that sort of nice scene of Yondu that kind of takes the edges off his character again. Yeah, <laughs> which which goes back to my other point, which was it feels like it's kind of a, a, a replay of a lot of the greatest hits. To an extent, yes. There are there there, there are moments where you think, oh yes, you did that. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Uh, now you're just doing it with a few more bells and whistles. But there, there is there is new stuff in this. It's not. That's the good thing about it. It's it's not completely retreading. Yeah. There is. I mean, you know, it's it was interesting because I was listening to the Komodo Mayo podcast mm. today and their review of it, and it was quite interesting that they pointed out that a lot of the thing that made the first one 
that much more special compared to this one was the fact that the first one had this kind of air of unknown. You didn't know what you were going to get. It was a surprise factor, which I think, I don't know if it was the microphone was recording at the time or not, but we just discussed this down the pub as well. So it's mm. quite interesting hearing them come out with it as well. Because, yeah, yeah. That, that whole thing of part of the charm of the first one, it was completely out of nowhere and yeah. you didn't know what to expect. And it was you know, a really pleasant surprise as a result. Whereas this this time around, it's shoes on the other foot and it's huge amount of pressure for it to succeed because the last one was so good. Mm. But I think they've mostly pulled it off, it has to be said. And as I say, I did enjoy it more the second viewing as well. So I think it's gone up from a 7 out of 10 up to an 8 out of 10 now. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I mean, I, I can't really say much um, in, on that respect until I've seen it on Monday. But mm. um, yeah, I mean, the more I've, the more I thought about it on the way home um, that night, although I must admit I was fully stocked on the booze cabinet at that point. Um, I, I have yeah, to say, well, some of us were so fully stocked they passed out on the train and woke up in Dartford. But there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Rack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just remember, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, yeah, early early doors on the pub is no good for your <laughs> for your podcasting or or navigation skills. There you go, no. tip from the top. <laughs> or your diet, for that matter. I've <laughs> oh. the amount of junk food I ate on the way home. <laughs> Strangely enough, so did I. So, did I. <laughs> but I, I, anything anything savoury, I just devoured anything savoury. At one point, I was I, I was conscious that I was eating a massive pasty on the train, and I, I had no memory of where I got it from. <laughs> <laughs> like, I hope I didn't just find this somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I found it next to a dead tramp. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> mm. But um, uh, back to the film. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I mean, for me, I guess, I guess that's part of the part of the thing that's going to be hard to sort of square off is the fact that you know the first one was such a surprise, so the second one's got to kind of do more with you know more to to kind of produce yeah. that sort of feeling. Whereas this has got a familiarity about the whole thing. It has. It's it's still in the established style, which was a, a, a shock and a surprise the first time, a mm. pleasant surprise. Whereas now it's like it. it well, it, it's ultimately it is more of the same in, in in many ways. I think he's pulled out the stops a bit more on the sort of the color and the the visual spectacle, and presumably he's had a bit more money to throw around as a result. The first one being such a success. Yeah. So. Well, I was gonna I was gonna say the um probably the first the first fifteen minute sequence. Yes. With with Kurt Russell followed by followed by the um the Guardians doing their first job, so to speak. It, I mean that probably cost more than the rest of the other film put together. <laughs> Quite probably, yes. <laughs> <laughs> because they because I have to say that I mean and again, you know, in case we didn't mention it before in part 1, um you know, this is kind of spoiler driven, but you know, the de-aging of Kurt Russell was it's fantastic. Yeah. Uh, unbelievable. <laughs> I don't know quite I mean, whoever did that job whatever team did that job deserves full kudos because they started off with the whole it must have been the same team that did Robert Downey Jr. in um was it in uh, Civil War yeah but this is actually better than that even yeah it's, it's far and away uh, you know massively different I mean it just touching on the uh, Avengers as well it was interesting that the, this 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 film is kind of still stalwartly trying to keep itself as far away from the Avengers as possible, even though there was clearly scenes which could have included them. Mm. I just you, are the, you did get a bit of Earth in this, didn't you? Interestingly, which the first yes. one didn't have at all. Yes, exactly. And it's kind of you get to that point where you're kind of like, well, hang on, wouldn't someone have turned up to check this out? You know, the big <laughs> the big plan that's when it you know ignites, so to speak. Yes, when all the the the, the um gray blobbly stuff starts taking over the world yeah 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 which which in itself is kind of a odd which is kind of an odd thing i didn't quite get the whole point of that well it was something to do with how he was transforming all the worlds to then better fit his image but the way it, it i like the plant stuff it came from originally mm. that was re- really nice and, and obviously alien uh but then when somehow or other that translates then into sort of blobby stuff just spewing out everywhere <laughs> yeah perhaps that perhaps it's like he's modeling putty that he then shapes to make the world more to his liking yeah yeah it just felt a bit sort of 
like last minute idea of you know it kind of felt a bit like um was it the incredibles in that kind of if everyone's the same then no one's special and they're all the same and yeah that kind of that kind of manic sort of make everyone in my image kind of thing even though he's a god with a small g son Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, I mean, overall, I, I liked it. I mean, I've, I've said this before. I think we both said this, but yeah, I don't know. What do you, what do you think? I mean, given, given how it's gone already, I mean, what do you think you're going to get out of like a third one out of this? <sighs> yeah. Be- I mean, they're teasing stuff at the end of this one for that, aren't they? Ooh, um, so yeah. they've, they've clearly got some idea. And I mean, where where this succeeds in a way the first one wasn't quite so strong is in setting up some decent villains in this one of one of whom obviously is is overcome uh, ego yes. but you you've also got this the sovereign who are still uh you know around by the end of it so yeah but then you know even those guys are kind of like just the ravengers all over again aren't they really well, I don't they, know. They, they had a t- very sort of unique. This is the whole thing that they're also it's a designer society, literally, that, mm. down to the people, and that idea of them, you know, flying their ships through computer games. Effectively, I really <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, the arcade. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, fantastic stuff. Yeah, really cool idea. Yeah, um, yeah. And did you notice Ben Browder, by the way? Yes, I did. <laughs> it's like, oh, hang on, I recognise you. Where do I recognise you from? It wasn't until I read the credits for a second time. It's like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. No, I recognised him, but it was really hard because he wasn't doing his emotional, watery eyes look. No, we didn't have much time to do that, really, did he? No, but yes, it was no, bless a, him. A different role he was playing, anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Po- basically, the Ben Bowder school of acting, for those who don't know, um, when you're in Farscape or in um, Stargate SG-1, the dodgy series, what you do is you basically go off set, you throw some lemon juice in your face, and then you kind of look at the camera with this kind of at the head at like thirty degree angle, while your eyes slowly go red like a rage victim, and you get all watery. That's that's emotional acting for Ben Bowder, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> but I think what ultimately I want three to be is just another fun out, final outing because there were there were a lot of serious threads to the plot in this one, yeah, you know, the sort of character stuff that we were dealing with, and it did feel a bit heavy at times as a result, whereas I think to recapture some of the fun frolics of the first one would be a good th- good way to go out, basically. Yeah, I so, mean... Oh, sorry, go on. Sorry. Yeah, so you do your dark middle section, and then you do your, your light and fluffy conclusion for the third one, really. Yeah, it need, it did... It, it does... It, I mean, did the exposition dumps, the character exposition dumps feel a bit more... Uh, some of them were better, but the the the, the heinous one still is the G- Gamora Nebula stuff. That's they really needed to have handled that more subtly than yeah. just. Stand this is how I'm feeling. Yes, feelings. <laughs> Let me tell you all about it. These like are my hurts. emotions. These are my yes. emotions. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, I, I must admit, but that I I like I say I I I think I'm a little sensitive to those kind of those kind of moments in any script of any film as soon as mm. they have someone stand still and then basically recite a block of text which is their backstory my eyes immediately roll because yeah. to me that's like the, the the writer or the director has turned around and said well we got to say it somewhere how can we fit it into an action sequence well we can't okay fine let's just have everyone just stand still while someone goes and then i never had a puppy as a child mm-hmm. and you know as i said yesterday in the pub and it's that to me is always that always feels a bit ham fisted, even when it's done well, because it's just it just seems like it's just an unnatural thing. It doesn't feel like people talking anymore. It feels like someone written. I mean, it, compare it to how they dealt with Yondu. I mean, just that first scene mm. uh, in the in the little <laughs> the sci fi whorehouse, which is a lovely little concept. But yeah. I was rather dreading my kids asking what that was all about. <laughs> they didn't, thankfully. <laughs> I... Actually, there are a few moments in the film where it's like, oh, yeah, watch this, my kids, aren't I? It's like the other one, <laughs> Drax's comment about uh, Ego having a penis as well. It's like, <laughs> oh, oh, crud. <laughs> yeah. Okay, the awkward drive home. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but thankfully, there was so much fun stuff for them to, to enjoy that they yeah. didn't really sort of, you know, that didn't stick with them, thankfully. Yeah. And the whole thing, well, pretty much everything with Mantis in that respect as well. Yeah, well, that was interesting actually because my daughter, as I, when I was exactly the same when I was her age as well, hated any anything that had romance in it. Mm. And uh, that, that, the, the wonderful way that Mantis and Drax 
uh, work as a not romantic couple. Mm. Um, it's just really good, and she was like, she was enjoying that a lot more than she was enjoying the usual Star Lord Gamora, Gamora stuff. So yeah, yeah, but, again, yeah, which again was a kind of a replay of the nowhere scene. Yeah, and there was, <laughs> and there wasn't much of it either. So it, it, that I say that the whole that didn't really seem fleshed out enough. No, so, yeah. Which is... I need to find somewhere new for the, those two to go. I mean, I I like the idea of it, yeah, and the the, che- the Cheers reference backing it up as well. That you know yeah. they've got this situation where it's it, it, it's an acknowledged, and if they do acknowledge it, then they they kind of ruin it. So they've got to yeah. unfortunately keep it as it is. But yeah, how they change that for the third one, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, see, if Star Lord if Star Lord was actually born in you know le- left in the nineties, he would have probably mentioned like moonlighting. <laughs> Possibly, yes. Was that, was that 90s? Oh, right, okay. Yeah, it was the very early 90s. Yeah. But, yeah. So, okay, well, I mean, so overall, the, is it better the second time around, or, the, you know, when you know what you're expecting? Yeah, yeah, it's it's a better what you relax into it a lot more, and you're not worried that it's going to get too bogged down in those scenes, because you know that there's some light stuff coming up quite soon afterwards, so that's okay, fine. <laughs> that's cool. Okay, well, that's that's really kind of what I wanted to hear, really, because... You know, I just suddenly thought, you know, I, I, you know, I came away from it thinking I really liked it. There was a lot to like. There's a lot to enjoy. But there's so much stuff where I'm just kind of going, oh, no, <laughs> is this ever going to end this bit? Yeah. <laughs> and that's, yeah, it's good to know that, that doesn't feel quite so bad. What about, what about a couple of other things? I mean, did, you know, oh, again, I can't say anything now, but I mean, okay, Turd Blossom. Um, Sylvester Stallone towards the end. Yep. Well, I had to do some research to find out what that was all about. Yeah. Do you want to just explain that because we are in the spoiler section, and but unfortunately, I cannot say. Yeah. So you, by the there's a one of the many after credit se- sequences, which actually it feels less like after credit sequence and more like sort of the the credits are somehow a part of the final bit of the film. It's really mm. interesting the way he's handled it, rather than the usual Marvel one or two scenes. This is actually more integrated into. The cre- yeah, it's, it's yeah. literally you get like four names go up, and then there's another scene, and then another four names, and it's like, oh, wow, what's going on? <laughs> uh, and loads, of, and, and the number of people who left after the first couple, oh, that must be it. And then a few more people left after the next one, and it's like you're you're missing it all, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, but one of them is is Stano gets this team together, who many of whom you've not seen before. In fact, I don't think you saw any of them up until that point in the film. No. So who are these people? And they're quite famous actors as well, Michelle Yeoh and Ving Rhames. And uh, you say, what's going on here? And it's clearly something for you know the really really serious fans. And having done a bit of research, apparently it's like a future Guardians lineup of the 30th century or something. Uh... So he's still only Starhawk. Uh, who's a uh, character that's been around for a bit, bit of a while now. And then you've got uh, so something called Martinez, who's played by Michael Rosenbaum. Charlie 27 is the Bing, Bing Rames, I think, if I'm getting this in the right order. Yeah. Elite, Alita is Michelle Yeoh. Then the computer voice that you only hear like one line off, uh, mm. it's called Mainframe and played by Miley Cyrus, of all people. Uh, uh, what? Yes, quite. Run, run, and then that, run that by me again? Miley Cyrus is yeah. it like uh, has got I think all of one line and you don't even see see Miley Cyrus either because it's just a computer voice, right? Weird. So it's, this is obviously being set up for uh, the next film because Stallone certainly has a, a multi film contract apparently, mm. um, and possibly as a sort of taking it on if they want to do another lot of Guardians and they they basically use the new team although you know obviously Stallone's getting on a bit now so they'll have to hurry up with that side of things but yeah. Very curious. And then there's a completely CG character, which I think is called Krugar, who's just like a sort of a shrimpy looking guy, isn't he? Sort of lobsterish. Yeah. That's right, who talks in sort of like symbols. Handsome. Yes, yeah, so he sort of does yeah, it was a bit like the aliens from arrival actually, wasn't it? <laughs> it was. It was very odd. But um yeah. But I... it's it's like sort of drop there. As as quite often usually with the Marvel films you get two after credit sequences and one of them's a bit weird and mm. then will get fleshed out later on and that was the weird weird one it was very old it's sitting there but i think that's what it's all about is setting up the next guardians mm. uh, and how, what's this remind this is reminding us oh the, the, yeah possibly like the the end of babylon 5 where they effectively a lot of the characters leave the station but they set up people to replace them even though they, they never actually then went on and did anything with them but yeah 
Okay, well, that's fair enough. My, Michael Rosenbaum, oh, blimey, I just remembered who he is. He's, he's the guy who played the Flash in the Justice League cartoons and also was Lex Luthor in Smallville. Oh, well, he's doing. He's trying his best to be practically every superhero character ever, by the sounds of it, though, guy. Yeah, yeah crystal bloke, <laughs> basically. Ah, nice. right. Okay, well, that's fair enough. That's that's interesting. Um, right. Any anything else you want to add? I mean, I'm 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 I unfortunately I like I say I I think I kind of shot my bolt in the first part essentially just because at the end of the day I've got nothing much more to add in terms of how I felt about it and and I don't really know what else I can say without massive massive spoilers and mm. I mean I like the script I like the dialogue I liked. It, it, the, vi- it, the visuals were the fantastic. The visuals are amazing. E- Ego the planet is just stunningly beautiful. Yeah, uh, was it? Was it? Uh, Commode said he. It looks like an animated Yes album cover. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was interesting point because Simon Mayo hadn't seen the first one. Yes. So coming to volume two without seeing volume one, he, he said it was rather like turning up to a, you know a party that's already been, already been going a few hours and you, you feel slightly out of place. Yeah, you're so, the you're the designated driver at a really loud rocking party. Yeah. Well, see, I I just couldn't imagine going into that without having seen volume one. It would have. Yeah, no. I would imagine it would make an awful lot of sense. Because no. they don't give him his due. What he doesn't do is give the you know background to the characters all over again for those who haven't seen the first one. Because you know, everybody assumed that everybody got to see the part one. Exactly. Yeah, it, it, that is it. That is one thing I did appreciate is they don't they don't literally just go okay right let's retell the story again. They do just continue the story, which is quite or nice. or have pointless scenes that just underline what we've already learnt about them in the first one. So yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. But don't worry, you're a trash panda. I'm sorry to call you a raccoon. <laughs> yes. <laughs> is that better? Is that better? Oh, it's worse. <laughs> it's way worse. <laughs> <laughs> and the line about uh, Drax leaving a t- uh, uh, rocket leaving one of Drax's turds on the pillow that creased the kids up no end <laughs> and they are imagine. legendary <laughs> <Good joke. laughs> nice my turds are legendary <laughs> anyway um, one thing we might need to do of course yes is revisit the Milano well, I funny enough I was thinking that when we watched it because I tell you what the manoeuvrability it was pulling in that opening yeah it was through the roof so i think that needs to go up to five yes actually yeah that's that's good bring it back on bring it back on track hold on let's have a look i've Is... already I've, I've i've already been yes tinkering have you <laughs> There's a lot of gray boxes <laughs> yeah I, as soon as i started looking into it it's like okay so the sublight we we got it pegged quite low yeah, now we've seen the FTL in 71 jumps. <laughs> yes, well, we'd only given it one originally because it was an un- unknown FTL, but now it's got a limited instantaneous mm. jump facility. The limitation this one being if you do it too often, it's, it tears your face into a billion different dimensions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it is effectively a jump gate, isn't it? Yeah, and so, they actually say at one point that they need to be in a specific place, don't they, in order yeah. to then use use the jump. Yeah. So it's, it's it's kind of a curious one, but I think that one would peg it at four for limited instantaneous jump. Yeah, but it still needs a jump gate, so it'd probably be at uh, three. Maybe it's pegging it down to three then. Yeah, yeah you're right. But yeah, the manoeuvrability would need to be... And I tell you what, the defence, the amount of shit it took. Yeah, <laughs> it manages to crash into a planet and still everybody's alive, so... Yeah, I was going to say, it had wings and everything flying off of it. I was just, yeah... I think I think it's yeah I think it needs something I think it needs its passive Light, done as well. Yeah. <laughs> and, and likewise with firepower it takes on an entire fleet of these ships. Mm. Um so I mean we'd only got it pegged as two for firepower and we want at least I think three if not more. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, then no, no, definitely. So yeah, we could be we could be looking at pushing it up into the 50s I think. But even get it back into the top 10. Yes. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, you never know. I mean, you know, exterior and interior are well realised, and we've got the cool factor. I don't know about science, mind you. No, science is definitely one at best still, and, <laughs> and actually after that film we might want to peg it at zero, I don't know. Because <laughs> yeah. it really doesn't seem to be obeying any laws at no, all. No, exactly, exactly. <laughs> but, um, yeah, actually the the 71 Jumps is the Ravenger ship, I just remembered. Yes, that's right, it's not the Milano. No. But the Milano, they do do a jump, but they just do the one. 
That's right. And that's where they have to get to certain pieces of space. So they they could do the seventy one, but it's not generally advisable yeah. for. And the other <laughs> thing, reasons. the other thing that's quite interesting with that was also, in in you know in terms of spaceships, is the fact that the Ravager when it does do seventy one jump thing. It looks like it's going around the stars like a pinball, so it's not actually yeah. doing instantaneous jump. It's actually flying at light speed between millions and millions of worlds. Yes, <laughs> bizarre. I mean, visually, it's very amusing. But oh, yeah, it's it's, it's, yeah, it's brilliantly, brilliantly executed. But yeah, uh, and yeah, maybe maybe we should do the Ravenger ship. There you yeah, go. I mean, it's a curious one. It's an, is it the same one they had in the first one? Yes. Right. Yes, because uh, we didn't get to see a lot of it there. Whereas in this, you get to see a, a hell of a lot more in this one. I mean, the interior is fantastic. I don't know if they mm. filmed it inside a factory or something. It looks like they did. Um, yeah, and a lot of it. No, a lot of it's like hand-built sets as well. Because again, it has that whole thing of being on a banked platform, so that when the whole thing starts to get whacked and everything, you can see everything start to move around. So I think, yeah, maybe they actually did build the interior of that thing. But it was very impressive. Um, and with the whole sort of, you know, there's a whole third of it that detaches and <laughs> yeah. the engines moving around. I like really like that was cool. Yeah, the four section and the four section itself is pretty much a ship on its own. Yeah, I mean it's not really a shuttle, is it? I mean the thing's fucking oh no, enormous. it's huge. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and it can take a, it can take an absolute pounding from like millions and millions of ships. So yeah, maybe we should put that on the docket actually. I'm going to put that in the For Your Consideration folder, actually. Sounds like a plan. There you go. Avenger ships. Right. Uh, ship. Uh, that's G-O-T-G. There you go. So, um, yeah. Um, so, uh, what else? What other ships were there in this? I mean, we saw, we again, we saw the Nova Corps briefly. Oh, yeah. But, uh, yeah, blink and you miss it, really. It was the Sovereign ships. Yeah, they were interesting kind of, approach to being piloted. <laughs> yeah, but they were also kind of weird in terms of, for some reason, they seemed to sort of split into two. Yes, it's like almost like they had sort of warp sleds for, mm. you know, for going long distances, and then they detach. Or maybe the bit that the detachability was about them going into the atmosphere. I'm not sure, but uh, yeah. yeah. Hmm. But well, they were very, as with the rest of the, the, that culture, it was all very elegantly designed, wasn't it? And yes. Bling. Lots of bling. <laughs> lots of bling. Uh, that is kind of the thing, isn't it? it, it you know, this, this is one thing they get very, very right, is that, that you, you get a sense of the history and the story and the race. Yeah. Based on just looking at the ships and everything they produce. Because, I mean, like, like you say, you see the sovereigns and it's like sort of all gold and very ornate and looking lovely and then you've got on the other hand you've got you know sort of the ravenger ships which are all rusty and dirty and gritty and f- sort of bolted together and s- they're like sort of you know united states and steam engines in space you know which could be chunky things yeah exactly so for me that i thought was rather interesting to watch look from a purely from a design point where you can yeah. just sort of sit there and go you know this the history of the the race or the team or the group is you know actually in built into the ships had you know personality which is very nice so that's really cool so um right any last thoughts because i think we kind of without you know without over laboring it i think we've yeah, kind of yeah, hit, we've probably hit dealt with point. it now haven't we yeah it's, i think uh, so yeah Ex- excellent film and, uh, and even slightly better on a rewatch just in terms of Putting your your mind at ease a bit for the some of the bits that aren't so good. Yes. Okay. And I I I can't confirm that. I did I I did have to say that I came away feeling a little bit like been there, seen it, done that. But I still enjoyed it. So I'm yeah, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing it again on Monday. So there you go. So um yeah, unfortunately Andy couldn't be here. Uh, he's off. He's off in London for some reason that we didn't quite get to the bottom of. And, Maybe he's going to see the film again. <laughs> yeah, probably. And yeah, yeah, just um yeah, we'll we'll leave it there. So, um thank you very much for listening. Um thank you for this rather ramshackle um version of a podcast. Thank you. <laughs> and um thank you Pete for getting online again so we can record the final part. <laughs> nice. uh, and uh, yeah, if you want to leave your comments about what you thought of the film, uh leave them on the feedback on the um 
on the Facebook group, which is facebook.com slash group slash Space Doc Jury. Or you can leave them with us on Twitter, which is at Space Doc Jury. And, uh, yeah, we'll catch you all next week for another full episode. Until then, take care. And, um, yeah, let's play out with a... Yeah, I don't know. What do you think? What should we play out with? Oh, uh, which is the one that's, that was... Uh, the one that uh, Ego knows all the lines from. It's just the tune for that has been kicking around in my head ever since I saw the film, so... Oh, um, um, the, the sailor going back to the sea? Yeah, <laughs> okay. I love that. <laughs> I don't know what this is called, but I'll find it. We'll play, <laughs> we'll play out with that. So, until next time, take care, thanks again for listening, and we'll see you all next week. Till then, tatty bye. I am Groot. I'm Groot too, and so is my wife. <laughs> <laughs>